get a sound check? Yeah. No, not yet. We're going on it. Did Margaret Five? sound check yet? Do you sound check yet? No, not looking forward to it. I'm terrified. Half my shit is broken. This is the quietest room on Earth. Located at Microsoft's headquarters in Redmond, Washington, the anechoic chamber is so quiet that background noise is measured in negative decibels, and mere minutes inside have been known to induce panic, disorientation, and even auditory hallucinations. Blood, bone, breath. The only sound you'll hear in the chamber, and others like it, is you. But despite its sheer deprivation, there is one thing that an anechoic chamber cannot be adequately likened to. You know, I think hearing people don't really understand that this this is, it goes way beyond the actual physical condition of deafness. It's a it's a distinct culture, and in that and under the umbrella of deaf culture, there's many subcultures. But deaf culture with a capital D is a very real thing, and that's the first huge learning curve. We are very hearing centric. We're very able bodied thinkers. We think of ASL as as an interpretation of English. It is not. American Sign Language is a different language. It has nothing to do with English. That was Sound of Metal director Darius Martyr, whose 2019 feature debut sought to explore a slice of that culture on film and as authentically as possible illustrate a young man's transition into it through immersive filmmaking, disciplined performances, and a rare measure of human awareness. The concept for Sound of Metal was born a decade and a half ago in conversations between Martyr and fellow screenwriter Derek C. in France, a former metal drummer who left his band after signs of tinnitus started to set in. At the time, C. in France was already half done developing his experience into his own film called Metalhead, featuring members from the band Jucifer, a nomadic metal duo known for living and touring full time out of an RV. But when the project was abandoned, Martyr adopted the premise and raised it into Sound of Metal and the story of Ruben Stone, a fictional drummer in a metal duo of his own who rapidly becomes deaf. That's why. In the left ear, you came in at 24%. Okay. That is not good. Yeah, I see that. So what, <clears throat> what can we do about it? How do I get it back? But for Martyr and his team, capturing that experience on film was a tremendous challenge, one less of sight than of sound. And that's where sound designer Nicola Becker comes in. Bonjour, mon nom est Nicolas Becker. Je suis bruiteur de formation et je je me suis mis aussi à faire du sound design, aussi un travail de composition, un travail de captation de field recording. On their first meeting, Becker and Martyr actually visited an anechoic chamber in Paris. They used it as a starting point to discuss the internal sensation of external silence and set to work creating as authentic a soundscape as possible. My first idea was to, to go to something very naturalistic. So the, the idea is that we try to actually understand uh, uh, physically from, from the people who had this experience what, what was the, the inner feeling, you know, like the body feeling of it. When consulting the deaf community, Martyr and Becker chose to specifically learn about the experiences of individuals who were not born deaf, the best match, the life and perspective of their hero. Diegetically, that meant a complex mix of noise and quiet, the sound of drums, blenders, traffic, are all suffocated through Ruben's point of view. And as Ruben first grapples with his loss of hearing, that point of view is reinforced by Martyr's camera 
When Ruben fails a shot, his auditory perspective takes over, and words to a hearing audience are drowned out. But when the camera takes a step back to a spectator's distance, like passers-by, we can hear again. He's having trouble even communicating with me. It is... These techniques are further paired with Becker's minimalist score, which was composed for an instrument called a crystal bache, a glass organ embedded with metal rods whose varying lengths and weights produce an eerie, resonant drone when brushed, quite literally the sound of metal. Of course, any emphasis on authenticity in a film also places enormous pressure on the performer. Riz Ahmed, who plays Ruben, was tasked with learning American Sign Language and drumming in the months leading up to filming. Martyr made it clear that he was going to provide Ahmed with no safety nets. When filming the raucous concert scenes shot in front of live audiences, Martyr's philosophy was simple. I said, look, if you suck, you suck, you know? You're going to be as good as you get. A creed pushed to an even greater extreme with the film's use of language. Martyr demanded Ahmed learn to comprehend ASL beyond just what the script contained. I also said, you know, you're going to be in a deaf community for, uh, as a character, your character has lived in a deaf community for four to six months. So you have to learn ASL right. to the degree that Ruben would know it. You can't just learn your lines. You have to be able to improvise. It's disrespectful to the deaf community. You have to show up with a command of that language. Riz Ahmed's ASL coach, Jeremy Lee Stone, claimed that Ahmed refused to use textbooks, opting instead to learn the language through conversation, just as Ruben would. The first day you were here, you remind me of an owl. <laughs> owl? Owl? Martyr also insisted that Sound of Metal be screened to accommodate deaf audiences. The film is captioned uh, tonight, so it's not just subtitled, it's captioned. And, and really this is the beginning of an experiment of bringing together uh, two distinct cultures and enjoying a film together. And that means that we all experience the film slightly differently, um, but we do it together in the same room. When the film premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival in 2019, the subtitles were hard-coded into the reel, and the only moments where captions don't appear in the film are instances when Ruben's perspective takes over, before he's become fully acquainted with ASL. For a hearing audience, these scenes become some of the most affecting, left like Ruben in open water without a guide, immersed in a community and culture and language, very different from the one we take for granted every day of our lives. The hard-coded captions have since been removed, but Martyr encourages audiences to keep them on. Everybody here shares in the belief that being deaf is not a handicap not something to fix. It's pretty important around here. Those are words spoken by Ruben's mentor, Joe, played by Paul Racy, himself a child of deaf adults and a lifetime ASL interpreter for the LA court system. I think what truly sets Sound the Metal apart from too many other films that struggle to tackle similar themes and stories about change and loss is the way that it chooses to fold deafness into a broader narrative. In Sound the Metal, deafness is treated less as an obstacle than as a catalyst, fueled to explore an equally potent influence on the story. Addiction. My name's Ruben. I'm an addict. I have four years clean now. Recovery plays an essential role in Ruben's arc, a former addict of quote-unquote everything, as well as that of his partner Lou, who has previously committed self-harm, likely linked to a traumatic family history. But whatever demons the two battle in an effort to help themselves is outweighed by each one's mission to help the other at any cost. Lou helps Ruben into a deaf sober house, a community of people who are importantly there to address their addiction, not their deafness. It's very important if you want to be here. 
to understand that we're looking for a solution to, to this, not this. And as Ruben's journey develops within and without that community, he begins to come to terms with what he has and hasn't got, to cut ties with the path he long imagined for himself and finds peace and beauty and quiet culminating in a scene where dialogue plays second fiddle to nonverbal communication, where emotion is universal, where one journey can end, and a new one can be anything that we choose to imagine. <laughs>